let's prove that v, the set of ordered pairs x, y of real numbers, is a vector space. As we can see up here at the top, vector addition and scalar multiplication are both different than they usually are. So to prove it is a vector space, we need to show that all the 10 axioms are satisfied. Let's start with closeness. What happens when we add these two vectors together? Because the x and y's are real numbers, regardless of what they are, when we add them together, we'll get another pair that is in our vector space. Now let's show commutativity. This means that order doesn't matter. So we've already showed what x1, y1 plus x2, y2 is equal to. So let's do it the other way around. Look up at the top at our rule and let's write it out. Of course, the order is just changed. So the x's and the y's have switched, but because they're numbers, order doesn't matter. So that means that the left side equals the right side. It is commutative, and this is included in our vector space. Next, let's show associativity. So on the left side, I'm going to write x1, y1, and we're going to add that to the sum x2, y2 plus x3, y3. So this is the answer. Next, let's add these two brackets together and see what we get. So I'm adding the first x1 plus all of this, all of this, plus x2, plus x3. Now we have minus 3, but then we're adding another minus 3. So I'm going to write minus 6, and then add all the y's. So y1 plus y2 plus y3. Now let's do this the opposite way. The right side is going to be we add the first two pairs first, and then add the third one. Next, let's add these two pairs together x1 plus x2. Now I'm going to write x3 next, just so it's the same order as our previous answer. And then we have the minus 3, but then we also have the minus 3 up here. So I'm going to write minus 6. And then we just add all the y's together. And of course, this is an element of our set. It's just a pair of real numbers. And the left side equals the right side. So we have associativity. Next, let's find the zero vector. The zero vector has the property that if we add x1, y1, plus our zero vector, let me just call it cd, then we get back x1, y1. Let's do this addition. We'll get x1 plus c minus 3, y1 plus d. And we want this to equal x1, y1. Now we can just equate the like terms, the x's and the y's, and we'll get x1 equals x1 plus c minus 3. We're trying to find c, so we need to isolate it. If we move the x1 to the opposite side and the 3 to the opposite side, x1 minus x1, they're cancelled out, and we're left with c equals 3. And now let's find what d is. We have y1 equals y1 plus d. We move the y1 to the other side, we get y1 minus y1, which is 0, and we get d equals zero. So now we can say that our zero vector is three comma zero. So this shows that the zero vector doesn't always have to be zero zero. Next let's find the negative vector for x1, y1. So there's a property that says that the negative vector is the same as doing negative one times our vector. So how does multiplication work again? Let's look up at the top. For our first component, we have negative x1 minus three times a, so plus 3 plus 3 again, so I'm going to write plus 6, and minus y1. Now to check that this negative vector we've just generated is right, we want to add it to xy. So let's add negative x1 plus 6 comma negative y1 to x1, y1, and our goal is to get the zero vector. So we get negative x1 plus 6 plus x1, and then minus 3. And for the second component, we get negative y1 plus y1. And what does this give us? The x1s cancel out. We're left with 6 minus 3, which is 3. And for the second component, we have 0, which is our 0 vector. And we also note that our negative vector is an element of v. It's an ordered pair of real numbers. Next, let's check the scalar multiplication axioms, beginning with closeness. 
So if we multiply x1, y1 by a scalar a, what do we get? We get another element of our set v. Next, to show distributivity of scalar multiplication, we multiply our scalar by the sum x1, y1 plus x2, y2. We want to make sure that this is the same as our scalar times the first term plus our scalar times the second term. So let's do the addition. Now let's do the scalar multiplication. Now when we collect like terms, we get minus 3a minus 3a, so minus 6a plus 3, and on the right, ay1 plus ay2. On the right side, we do the scalar multiplication first and then the addition. When we apply our special scalar multiplication rule and to do our addition, we need to clearly see the components of our ordered pairs for a special addition. We add the x components together and then subtract 3, and then we just add the y components together. Let's collect like terms. We get minus 3a minus 3a, that's minus 6a, plus 3 plus 3 minus 3 is plus 3. And we see that the left side equals the right side, and that this is an element of our set. To show distributivity of scalar addition, on the left side we're going to show what a plus b, two scalars, multiplied by a vector looks like. And is this the same as doing a dot our vector plus b dot our vector? So let's apply our scalar multiplication rule we see at the top. And now we can get rid of our brackets. For the right hand side, we're going to do a our scalar times x1, y1, then use our vector addition to add b times our vector. So by applying our scalar multiplication rule, we get this. So we have our components, x component and y component of each pair. And now we'll just follow the rule up here. So we add the first two components, a x1 minus 3a plus 3 plus b x1 minus 3b plus 3. Then we subtract 3. So I'll just erase the 3. Okay, and then we just add the y components. And of course, if we just rewrite this term, we'll get the exact same thing as what we have written on the left side. We can conclude, well, first of all, this is in our set, and we say left side equals right side. To show associativity, we need to demonstrate on the left-hand side that a times b times our vector is the same as if we multiplied ab times our vector. Let's simplify the inside of our bracket, and now let's distribute the a in using our scalar multiplication rule we see ah, right here at the top. Next, let's take a look at the right side. So if we multiply ab times our vector x1, y1. If we simplify the left-hand side just a bit further, we get ab x1 minus 3ab, then plus 3a minus 3a, so I won't write that, plus 3. For our second component, we just have a, b, y, 1. So we can clearly see that this belongs to our set v. It's an ordered pair of real numbers, and the left side equals the right side once again. Lastly, let's check the unit element. So if we multiply 1 times x1, y1, do we get back x1, y1? Well, applying the rule that we see here at the top, we'll get 1, x1, minus 3 times 1, so minus 3 plus 3, and 1 times y1. So we see that we get back x1, y1. So the unit element 1 times x1, y1 is an element of our set. To summarize, to show that set V with new addition and scalar multiplication was in fact a vector space, we checked all the 10 axioms, we saw that all of them were satisfied, so now we can conclude that V is in fact a vector space.